You're watching ABC 7 News at 7. We're building all the infrastructure. We're building the roads. We're building the water, the sewer. All that stuff gets done ahead of time. So it's kind of like, all right, you can't make everybody happy. Lakewood Ranch is getting ready for a massive expansion, but is this a good thing for the long-term future of Sarasota County? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the Lakewood Ranch expansion project, but first, our top stories at 7. It's here. Northern Sarasota County is getting its first ever medical marijuana dispensary. Altmed Florida plans to open its dispensary along Fruitville Road between Jets Pizza and Golden Vision in early August. Right now, the closest dispensary is in Northwest Bradenton or South in Venice. The dispensary called MUV will offer vaping products, inhalers, patches, topical and oral medication. I can't tell you how many calls we get on a daily basis uh, from patients asking when we're going to open. We have people coming to our corporate office all the time uh, thinking that, it, that we're open now, but not until August. Customers must have a patient identification card before they're able to purchase any of the products. There are several doctors in Sarasota County that can prescribe it. Tonight, the final community discussion about permanently closing Sarasota School Avenue. Last month, the city approved the school board's request to close it when Sarasota High is in session, and now the commission will consider closing the road for good. The road cuts directly through the middle of the Sarasota High School campus. Supporters say it is safer to just close the road permanently, but some neighbors say it is overkill. The school district says even when classes are not in session, there is extracurricular activity on campus. The district hopes it can appease neighbors with more as aesthetic improvements. We're going to find a place that we can really work with the community that the enhance that we can enhance the bike and pedestrian um, accessibility around the campus so that um, it's it's an asset and it's not just a it's not just a sidewalk but we're looking at benches we're looking at so, uh, shade cover we're looking at um, some alternative routes um, around the campus no word if that will be good enough for opponents who don't want the road closed in the first place after an internal investigation northport's assistant police chief is being relieved of his duties michael pelfrey allegedly disobeyed orders twice Pelfrey filed a suit through the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and the city attorney will handle the case. No word yet on who will be Pelfrey's replacement. Now let's head over to ABC 7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan for a look at the first day forecast. Bob. Thanks, Alan. And the radar picture indicating some showers and storms once again developing, but mainly inland this afternoon and evening. You can see that activity pretty heavy. Uh, good evening. It looks as though we'll see a pretty nice uh, night along the coastline. Not much activity anticipated. Some outflow boundaries from this cell here may generate a few isolated cells along the coast and into the Gulf of Mexico late tonight and into the morning hours. And you can see that rough weather extends from Orlando up to just southwest of Daytona Beach tonight, raining in Gainesville. All this again associated with this high pressure ridge, which is right over the top of us for the most part, and that is suppressing a lot of our normal afternoon thunderstorms. That high pressure is in transit. It's going to end up down in the Straits of Florida, at least the center of it will, and that will mean more of a west to southwesterly wind component for the next several days. And that means warm and muggy conditions overnight with lows right around 80 degrees and feels like temperatures. Uh, even at 90 uh, at 11 o'clock at night. So uh, that's going to be the case I think, through Friday and then things start to change a little bit uh, just as our winds change too. So west winds typically again throughout the day. Uh, tomorrow will favor inland storms throughout the afternoon and evening with a chance for a few coastal showers in the morning. Now this particular model indicating that these storms are going to break down into central Florida, eventually send out some surface boundaries or little miniature cold fronts, if you will, from the a cool air of the rain and then that in turn could produce a few scattered showers around the coast later on tonight and tomorrow morning. That's what we're going to see that kind of pattern and you'll see even at 3:30 a.m. this particular model indicating some storms out here. I don't think it'll be as widespread, but there'll be one or two lone storms out there in the Gulf of Mexico and then uh, by the morning hour still a few showers along the coast, but not much uh, sunrise starts and then we'll see that west coast breeze penetrate inland with a, a good chance for some storms east of I-75. Atmosphere isn't all that juiced up right now. We have some dry air to the east and to the west of us. Currently, uh, we are under the influence of a large area of high pressure, and that means heat indices up near 100 to 105 degrees over the next several days, uh, beginning at around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, continuing up into uh, 4 or 5. 
89 now in Orlando. It's cool where it's raining into Jacksonville, 76, 79 in Tallahassee. That's what we're going to miss is that rain cooled air. We've had a nice couple of evenings uh, on uh, Sunday and Monday, but now uh, things are changing a little bit as we uh, don't see that rain around to cool us down much. 88 in Braden at 89 in Mac City and the Gulf water temperature now at 86 degrees, 79 in Punta Gorda and a little bit warmer into uh, Mayaka City at 89 degrees there. Braden at 88 and 91 at Avon Park. Sebring checks in the same. Lake Placid, a little bit more rain around. Alan? Thanks, Bob. Some would call it progress. Others, sprawl. Lakewood Ranch is about to get a new development. It's being called Waterside. It will bring 5,100 homes, new roads, and retail plaza to University Parkway. It is all part of some big moves for the eastern part of the county. And ABC 7's T Taylor Tarangano is here with more of those moves. Taylor. Good evening, Alan. These 2,000 acres of land being turned into the Waterside community is part of Sarasota's growth plan by the year 2050. It's booming development that almost everyone I spoke with is really excited about. Almost everyone. We had 30,000 acres, 50 square miles. We're going to develop. That's what we're going to do. And that they've done. Schroeder Manatee Ranch, also known as SMR, has owned and developed all of Lakewood Ranch since 1922. Back in 1999, the first thought of developing this area was presented to Sarasota County as the Villages. The commission approved it as part of Sarasota 2050, a plan for managing development in the county's rural areas through the following 50 years. And so there's a certain number of developments in Sarasota County that are 2050 projects. This is one of them. After years of working through design and building regulations, property rights, even litigation over alleged growth management violations, the first villages have finally taken form. It's a total of 5,144 total units on about 2,000 gross acres. But the president of Control Growth Now calls this uncontrolled urban sprawl. This is uh, over 5,000 homes, and uh, which means well over 10,000 people. And they're not going to be staying out there. Uh, they're going to be driving in uh, to the rest of the, the county. So tremendous increase in traffic. The massive waterside project, which to put in perspective, is on the same amount of land as 1,512 and a half football fields. We bulk sell the land. So let's say we have 2,000 acres. We'll sell 300 acres to Pulte, which is a national developer and then they'll develop their own uh, models and build their own internal roads. Pulte is one of the five developers SMR has awarded thus far. Each brings a unique model to Waterside, including single-family homes, townhomes, condos, and the 1,900 apartments to surround a new downtown with retail and lakefront restaurants that will be right here in the center of it all. This is our new town center that we're uh, working on right now. We'll be starting horizontal construction, which is dirt work, in October or November. And then we'll be coming out of the ground vertically with it, probably in April or May. But first, the roads. This new development is why you can now drive from University Parkway South on the Rain Road to Fruitville Road, and soon you'll be able to do the same on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. And the two lanes of Lake Southside will continue through there, and it will eventually connect all the way down to Fruitville Road. $90 million in infrastructure and new traffic that some aren't very excited about. And this very pro-developer county commission that we have opened the gate, the floodgates. Uh, to all this development out east. So we're just starting to see the impacts. But others, like the Church of Hope, located right on the road that will soon be the new Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, say this is the future they've been looking forward to. So thankful that it will free the flow of traffic because of the congestion that we see almost every day on I-75. And this will allow those that are in Lakewood Ranch to connect with those that are down in the Fruitville and Sarasota corridor. It appears though that whether you like it or not, the development is here to stay. The state of Florida grows by about 850 people per day and that's going to continue no matter what. That growth is coming. It's the American way. And on that trend, Lakewood Ranch has proven to be one of the fastest. We were third in the country last year. We were the third fastest selling community in the country, not just like in Manatee County or Sarasota County, but in the country. So apparently we're doing something pretty good. And the Lakewood Ranch Boulevard extension from University Parkway to Fruitville Road is expected to start in July. It will be finished, weather permitting, in just over a year. 
Taylor, thank you. In a moment, we'll head over to the trapezoid for much more. Stick around. I'm Anne. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. You know, fortunately, this was my first job out of college. So I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats. I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix, and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience, that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis, and I'm here for you. Each day, researchers make discoveries that bring us closer to the moment when all cancer patients can become survivors. Their progress is made possible with the help of clinical trials. Clinical trials are the brightest torch researchers have to light their way towards better treatments. And if you've been diagnosed with cancer, they may be your brightest ray of hope. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Welcome back. Oh good, more development. We often talk about how crowded Sarasota is and the lack of affordable middle class housing. Well, they're building in Lakewood Ranch 5,100 new homes on 30,000 acres. It is still feeling a real need for housing or is it adding to a problem of too many cars, too much traffic and too many people on the Sun Coast? And joining us now are Dan Lobeck, the president of Control Growth Now and radio host on WSRQ, Kathy Antunis, and welcome to you both. Uh, Dan, let me start with you because we do often talk about the unaffordability of the Sun Coast for just middle income folks and I would imagine that more development in places like Wood Lakewood Ranch where the housing is just a little bit less expensive is a good thing. Well the affordable housing needs to be near the jobs and putting it out in urban sprawl isn't the right policy. You could go on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean and it's it's I mean everything is a matter of degree Lakewood Ranch uh, and and Sarasota downtown Sarasota is not not that far apart. Um, well, but the problem is the traffic, and what you need to do is have people near the jobs, near the amenities. That's why urban sprawl is so disastrous. And Sarasota, the Sarasota County Commission, being so pro-developer, has opened up the whole eastern county all at one time, uh, and the development is coming up, and it's going to be about the size of the city of Sarasota in terms of population. Kathy, they would not be building it if there were not demand for it. Sure. I mean, there is demand, but the reality is we have people here now who are not, they don't have a shot 
at a, at a reasonable place to live. Half of the children in Sarasota County are eligible for a free or reduced lunch. There's just a, a program that uh, Washington Hill is, is taking care of babies. Again, half of the kids in Sarasota County are being born into poverty. So where are, where are those families going to live? And I don't see that Lakewood Ranch, I mean, I is there real affordable housing? Um, is accessibility to jobs is an issue. Right, but as they said in Taylor's story, about 850 people are moving to Florida every day. They mm -hmm. have to go somewhere. Sure. Be that as it may, where do they go around here? Well, and, and I'd like to speak to the building model that we're seeing, which sounds good, but the 2050 plan that they dismantled really insisted on compact walk walkable development, which does set the table for jobs and and um, not having to drive to do everything. Dan's point is well taken. Okay, we are just getting warmed up and we'll have much more on the Lakewood Ranch expansion project right after we get the check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harris. Bob. Thanks, Alan, and uh, we had some great photos sent in uh, recently. Uh, this is of uh, the thunderstorm this morning at around 2.30. An amazing photo from uh, Dylan John Wade Cox and. Uh, this uh, lightning bolt was the last one of the storm that was off in the Gulf, and this is what we're going to see more of a possibility of a Gulf storms overnight and along the coast in the morning hours just after sunrise, and most of it will be inland. And just to give you an idea of the power of these lightning strikes, this one just blew this tree apart with 50,000 degree temperatures that the lightning channel can generate. Uh, just explodes these trees and you can see it lying right there. All the bark was thrown over 100 feet away uh, from this. Luckily, no one was in the park at the time and Lakewood Ranch webcam showing us uh, some clouds around Lakewood Ranch occasionally and then most of the showers pushing off to the east. Uh, we did see that, but we are starting to see some uh, development into central Florida, and some of those storms are pretty big. The east coast and west coast breezes coming together uh, right here and really starting to get quite active with lightning near Arcadia and eastern portions of Hardy and DeSoto counties. Not much going on here, but look at the tremendous amount of rainfall over northern sections of DeSoto County. That rainfall rate up to about an inch and a half per hour uh, with some uh, pretty good lightning occurring with that. That's going to stay base basically to the east of the immediate coastline now. Nothing going on. We had a shower earlier in Bethany that has since moved on and some storms up north into Hillsborough County. Atmosphere isn't all that moist at this point. We have some dry air down south into the Keys and throughout the Gulf of Mexico. Nothing tropical developing here, but there is a system off the Carolina coast that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring. Even if it were to develop, it would not have an impact on our weather here much, although it is going to push a high pressure ridge down to the south of us which will give us that west to uh, onshore flow, which brings that high humidity in uh, from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That west wind keeps things as far as the dew point goes up into the mid to upper 70s, and that means the heat index will be up to about 105 degrees at times over the next couple of days in the afternoon. This is Wednesday. Now looking at that, you'll see that uh, shower activity into central Florida pushing to the east near Fort Pierce. Not much going on here. The rain chance tomorrow 20 percent uh, for mainly inland storms and then as we push on through Thursday, there's a chance for a few morning showers right near the coast, and then that activity will start to spread inland throughout the late afternoon and evening as the uh, west wind pushes those storms that way. It's going to reverse itself back on Saturday and Sunday, so we're, we should start to see more showers return to the coast. That cools us off somewhat, but uh, for lows tonight, upper 70s above average will warm up into the upper 80s near the beaches, low 90s inland. And there's that system I mentioned, just a 20% chance for a, shower, a storm to develop into something tropical and then move off to the northeast around the periphery of a high pressure ridge. But uh, that trough of low pressure over the southeast is the culprit for knocking that high down south and providing us with the timing change of those storms. 87 degrees right now in Sarasota. It's cooled in Jacksonville down into the 70s. That's one thing we're going to miss of those uh, afternoon showers that cool us down in the evening. It was pleasant last night. Uh, temperature still warm at this hour. 88 degrees in Sarasota. The Gulf water temperature now at 86, 81. It's cooled in Arcadia because of the rain nearby. It's 87 degrees. The it feels like temperature 95 at this time and winds are out of the west at 10. The high today was 90, one degree above average. This morning's low was right at it at 74. Well, tomorrow's forecast, you can see that heat index, the top number here, 97 degrees at uh, 11 o'clock. That's what it'll feel like staying up near 100 degrees all the way through uh, the 4 o'clock hour. Well, beach and boating tomorrow, south winds turn to the west at 5 to 10 knots and we'll have seas running two feet or less and a light chop on the bays and inland waters. The 
Seven day forecast looks like this then. You can see temperatures uh, staying summer like, and you would expect that. Uh, the rain chance is lessening now for coastal locations, increasing inland areas both Thursday and Friday. And then they come back our way toward the beaches on Saturday and Sunday with those dangerous uh, lightning strikes. So keep that in mind if you're going to be venturing out over the weekend. Alan will be back with his guests right after this. Planning a carnival fantasy cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, no, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. Yeah. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USAswimmingfoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. I just need a second. Is your weight holding you back and affecting your health? Did you see this? Hmm? Your cousin had a heart attack. Really? Excess weight or obesity can be serious, but you can do something about it. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Download the free toolkit to prepare you to speak with a healthcare provider. Your weight does matter. Accept the challenge and take charge today. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Don't miss the 34th Annual Hotel Planner Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Festival, June 23rd through July 4th, with action-packed personal watercraft and powerboat racing off Lido Beach. And be sure to stop by the Boats by the Bay Party and this year's Fan Festival, featuring over 30 powerboats on display, live music, a live stream of the racing action vendors, and much more. Both events are free admission in the Van Wazel parking lot. Presenting sponsors include Sarasota County and Visit Sarasota. Proceeds benefit Suncoast Charities for Children. For info, visit sarasotapowerboatgrandprix.org. Many websites selling medication may look professional and legitimate, but the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. Welcome back. We are talking about the expansion of Lakewood Ranch and joining us for more are Dan Loback, the president of Control Growth Now and radio host Kathy Antunis of WSLR Radio. Kathy, I, I take it that you are not opposed in theory to the expansion of Lakewood Ranch and room for more homes and more people living here. Is it the question of of doing it or how we go about doing it? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely a question of how we go about doing it. Um, for the reasons Dan talked about, reducing traffic, when you build in a truly mixed-use, walkable fashion, you eliminate the need for car trips to just get a loaf of bread or go to the post office. It's, it's important that we build that way, not, and not just for transportation, but also it generates enough tax revenue to pay for the services that it requires. One of the reasons the county has perpetual financial problems is sprawl doesn't pay for the services it requires. You Why? wind up, well, because it's a very infrastructure hungry method of building. And so a single family home, there's a study, the landmark study um, done on this was in Sarasota County and found that for a subdivision home in Sarasota County, it takes 80 years to pay off its infrastructure, which is longer than the life of the infrastructure. It's simply not a sustainable way to build. But Dan, this is not a problem unique to Sarasota County. You see this everywhere, a discussion about, about sprawl and how much is too much. And I don't know 
too many places around Florida or the United States in general, which uh, are, is putting mass transit infrastructure in there to handle population growth. Well, you know, Kathy's a big advocate of mass transit, me less so, but um, the, the problem is we're not building the infrastructure needed to accommodate the growth at the same time as the growth. We're going to be gridlocked with this boom that the county has opened up for a massive urban sprawl throughout the eastern county. What's going on in the city of Sarasota? Uh, the West Villages, uh, another 50,000 people down there, you know, all going on at the same time. And uh, Fruitville Road and Lakewood Ranch Boulevard is going to be a nightmare. There's another huge development, the Fruitville Initiative, going on right at that corner. Uh, and I could point out other locations that they, they just are not planning. Well, you, you opened up a lot of questions here. You can't, I, starting with the fact that I, you know, we can't shut the doors around no. to the sun. What you do is control it, though. You make growth pay okay. its own ways, so you have the money to build the infrastructure. You protect the environment rather than paving it we over. We are just getting <laughs> warmed up. Our conversation on Lakewood Ranch expansion will continue right after a quick break. Florida Studio Theater presents Always Patsy Cline, extended due to popular demand. A tuneful tribute, the story of Patsy's rise to stardom is told by her biggest fan. Featuring such hit songs as Walkin' After Midnight, I Fall to Pieces, Crazy, and many more you know and love. Critics are calling Always Patsy Cline a genuine hit. Audiences are calling it outstanding. Always Patsy Cline is now playing. Tickets can be purchased at 941-366-9000 or floridastudiotheater.org. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the mission first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. Once you get atrial fibrillation, you need to have a very close relationship with your primary doctor. Prevention is the whole ball game here, because once you have a stroke, you can't undo it. A year without stroke, it's a year that you can enjoy doing the things that you've worked all your life to finally get to do. You took care of yourself. You did what is necessary for you to be around one more year. And then next year, we'll celebrate one more year without a stroke. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. You're watching ABC 7 News at 7.30.
Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about Lakewood Ranch expansion. And joining us for more are Dan Loback, the president of Control Growth Now, and radio host Kathy Antunis of WSLR Radio. And uh, Dan, let me pick up with you because you know I, I asked you. We, we can't close down the Suncoast to new residents, but you say control it. What do you mean by control it? I, are, you, are you talking about limiting the number of people who can move into areas like w Lakewood Ranch? No, that, that would be illegal. The courts say that. But what you do is it used to be that Sarasota County uh, opened up just enough land to meet population projections. It was in the comprehensive plan. Uh, a year and a half ago, that was repealed. And, and the doors were taken off the hinges. Whole Eastern County, everywhere else, all at once, whatever they can build, whatever they can sell, that's what we get. We're going to have a population boom because of that. It, it, it's a matter of meeting demand, but not getting ahead of demand and getting ahead of the capacity of our roads, our schools. School impact fees are one fourth of what the consultant recommended. We're, we're in their, their at capacity now, many of them. Um, the roads obviously are getting overcrowded. Uh, our environment's not being protected. Neighborhoods aren't being protected. Uh, growth is not being made to pay its own way as it should. So when, when you say, when Kathy, in response to Kathy, that an issue of mass transit in terms of building a system and getting it paid for where we can move people from A to B, you're saying that's not necessarily the answer? Is, is your answer requiring developers to pay for the, uh, the roads and the, the you know, the infrastructure? Well, I, I believe in, in multimodal transportation. Kathy's a big advocate of that. Um, but I, I don't think that buses get caught in tra that get caught in traffic, too, are the solution. And, and rail, light rail, is, is so tremendously expensive that it's really not at anybody's radar. Um, so, yeah, it should be part of the mix for people in need that, that need to go by bus. Uh, but as a replacement, uh, even if you get a, have a lane that's just for buses, that's going to squander so much capacity uh, that it doesn't make sense. Maybe we'll get into debate here on no, this, but okay. uh, mm -hmm. but you know, mass transit is not the the golden solution to gridlock on our roads. What the solution is is to have measured control of growth, allowing growth. Growth can be good if it's controlled. You know, uh, Kathy, I. I saw those renditions of the of what, what they have planned for Lakewood Ranch that uh, Mr. Uh, Bedford described really well and mm -hmm. it looks like a beautiful town center mm -hmm. uh, just your casual viewer would be watching and say it looks gorgeous sure. and you would be increasing your tax base and therefore oh, I'm asking the question right, right. Uh, if you if you more people move in more businesses spring up aren't you mm -hmm. increasing your tax base to do the things that you're talking about in terms of infrastructure and making this all yeah. work actually the data shows over the long term no with the sprawl development model now they're they're talking a good talk I, and you know if if this is truly at a higher density and walkable and I don't really think I was talking mass transit but I do think that's a good idea um, if it's truly walkable it's like the way America built before World War II, before the automobile was ubiquitous we had main streets with residential and offices overhead, more than a couple stories. I only saw a couple stories there. That's good, but it could be higher. And people didn't have to get in a car to do anything, everything. They walked, you know. That is inherently financially solvent. At that point, too, you didn't have this massive financial leveraging. A lot of things have changed that have facilitated this growth model. The other problem is we are not optimizing our existing infrastructure. And I'll give you an example. If you look on Fruitvale Road, before you get to I-75, right next to a public shopping center, there's a huge, huge field. And you know what? It's in that field is cows. This is what one um, national planner called Sarasota's checkerboard look. To Dan's point, we need to be building infill where we already have infrastructure investments before we go out and develop rural land. The problem is people like Pat Neal and Rex Jensen, or, or SMR, buy huge swaths of rural land for nothing. Then they donate to the commission and get it all rezoned. And so their investment, they're, they're buying land cheap and making huge money, where people who have land inside the urban service boundary that needs to be developed, um, they don't have that play. And 
it's but a problem that, for us. But that is not a new argument. And, um, it's and a national problem. It's a national problem. And, and the fact is, you know, voters have the opportunity to, you know, vote commissioners in and commissioners out. If the, uh, the, the same commissioners are, are voted in time after time, then obviously folks around here think they're doing a pretty good job. No, they don't. What they don't know is the facts. And it's great you have shows like this to try to bring out the facts. But when a candidate like Alan Mayo, who's running for re-election, can raise $80,000 by a few phone calls to big developers, and his opponent, Lourdes Ramirez, struggles to raise ten, dollars uh, it's not an evil playing, uh, even playing field. And that's why I'm for single-member districts, to cut the cost of campaigning by 80%. That's an upcoming show. Good. Good. But, but <laughs> one may argue, uh, if people feel that strongly about it, then they could, they could contribute to the candidate of their choice, can, Kathy. Can I jump in? Yeah. I, I give talks on dark money in Sarasota County. You know, that I've heard. We have a dark money problem in local elections that most people really aren't aware of. But when I ask people, and these are people who are focused on local politics, to name their five county commissioners, very few people. In an audience of 100, sometimes no hands go up, maybe five. Most people don't know their county commissioners, and yet, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it until there's a fire in your own backyard. And then, and then people realize, wait a minute, like Al Mayo and Siesta Key with, with height restrictions or, or the Signy Point 41 development that Benderson mm. wants to do, they realize this, this commissioner doesn't care what I think. But we, we, celery fields. But celery fields, we, yeah. we, we do have the ability of the public to come out and protest any of these new developments here. And I know, Dan, you are, mm. you are forceful in your opposition uh, of this and other uh, projects in Sarasota. But if people felt so strongly about it, why aren't we seeing the protests in mass to shut it down? Because if there's anything that politicians do listen to sometimes, it is uh, the public pounding on their doors. When, when influential, generous developer Jim Gabbard wanted to put a concrete crushing facility next to neighborhoods and a bird sanctuary, nationally renowned, um, I'd never seen the turnout. It, the yeah. place was packed and it was overflowing into two rooms in the hallways. Yet you had two of the three commissioners vote for it. Uh, because <laughs> they are heavily financed by that developer and, and, and his colleagues. Mike Moran, that's his district. If we had single member district, there's no way he would vote for that. So you don't see accountability. And that's a show that we'll, we will yeah. be doing there. But as we stand right now, um, are there predictions that this expansion of Lakewood Ranch is going to go through and we're going to be getting these new residents who can vote whatever way they, they choose to? Well, of course. I mean, it's it's already going through. I don't think that um, there's there's any plan to to change it. I don't know that we could change it. Yeah, it's been approved. Yeah. yeah, it's been approved. It's it's um and but if you go back to what happened with Sarasota 2050, there were private meetings with um, the developers who fund campaigns, and then it was brought in front of the public, and the whole process there were processes that were bypassed. And, and to again, I want to. Uh, get up public input. I want to give you one last chance uh, for the last word. Well, thank you. Growth can be good, but growth needs to be under control. We're the, the tenth fastest growing uh, community in the United States of America. The secret is out. Number one lists all over the place. So it's a bigger responsibility for the public to identify and elect the candidates that aren't in the back pockets of the developers, that stand for the people, protect neighborhoods, the environment, the taxpayers and our quality of life. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank mm -hmm. you both. Before we go, we want to uh, thank Dan Lobeck and Kathy Antunis, but we also want to talk about something that we shared last night uh, on last night's show about smartphones being made overseas and whether or not they pose a national security threat. Many smartphone users use apps to store their most private information like bank account logins and our location, but a lot of technology is made overseas, including in China. So are you worried about your private information being compromise. Pedro Alafia says, seems to think it doesn't matter either way, saying, quote, our information has been hacked from government websites. There is nothing more important than what is already out there. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. We have to take a break, but when we return, we'll get a check on Wall Street with business commentator Richard Stern. So stay with us. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking. 
or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the Black Belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watch out. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? Well, now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Welcome back. Joining us now is ABC7 business commentator Richard Stern. Uh, Richard, the news of the day is Harley Davidson, who has a, uh, a new detractor, who happens to be the president of the United States. Interesting. And of course, my hometown is Milwaukee, so I'm very familiar with Harley Davidson. Uh, Bob Harley grew up down the street from me, but the truth is I didn't know what Harley was at that point. Uh, but yes, it seems to be a very, very difficult circumstance because it's not that long ago when the president said, look at Harley, made in America, isn't this a great company? And now he's coming out and saying, those guys are going to pay more taxes than anybody else if they can't get it done here in the U.S. Well, let's try to explain what this all I is about. The president has uh, raised tariffs on Europe, China, Canada, Mexico. I don't know if I'm leaving out anyone. And one of Harley-Davidson's biggest emerging markets is Europe. Correct. So therefore, their business is going to get killed by these tariffs because it makes selling motorcycles more difficult in Europe. So they are making this move to set up a plant overseas to avoid that. Correct. They 16% um, of their production is Europe, which is their second largest market. The figures that I have seen say that the average motorcycle, and this is directly from Harley, is going to cost $2,200 more as a result of the increased tariffs. And Harley has said that in the near term, they're going to eat that expense. They're not going to charge it to the retailer. They're not going to charge it to the vendor. They're going to eat that expense. It's going to cost them $35 million this year, somewhere between $90 and $100 million next year. But what they hope to do, of course, is to manufacture these anywhere else so that when they're sent to the EU, the tariff is going to be 6% instead of 31%. Yeah. What is your opinion when a, a, a president uh, goes after a particular American corporation? Uh, the president went after Amazon a while back. Now, Harley-Davidson, is this good or bad for business? 
I don't think it's particularly good for business. I think people, um, you know, the word bully gets used an awful lot these days. And I don't mean to be political, but the reality is the President of the United States goes after whoever he wants to go after, whenever he wants to go after them. But the people on Wall Street are not real happy with that kind of performance or that, uh, that way of going about business. All right, Richard, thank you very much for joining us. When we return, we'll have more. But first, our AccuWeather forecast from Chief Media, or First Alert forecast, I'm sorry, from meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Thanks, Alan. And the Casey Key webcam is showing uh, beach conditions pretty good. If you can avoid the red tide, it's still out there. It's patchy, and there have been some reports of fish kills still going on along the west coast of Florida, but fewer and fewer. Uh, we have a midweek report coming out Wednesday from the FWC. We'll have that for you here at ABC 7. You can see the seas running less than two feet out there, and that's pretty much what it's going to be like tomorrow. And we'll have a little bit more of a westerly wind, too. I know we have a sea breeze, west wind now, southwest, west, southwest wind. But um, tomorrow, it looks like uh, the winds start to stay west, even in the uh, morning hours. And that always favors a few showers, pop-up showers near the coast. And then uh, they will move inland through the late morning. And then in the early afternoon, they should be well east of I-75, similar to what we're seeing today. There's not a whole lot going on, as you can see, along uh, Manatee, Sarasota counties, even Charlotte County. Not a lot, although we are starting to see a little bit of rain from some outflow boundaries there, especially down into Lee County near Fort Myers. Uh, but uh, the two sea breezes have met in the middle, and boy, are they exploding right now all the way across the spine of the peninsula. You can see the heavy rainfall now in Sebring, or just to the west of Sebring, and uh, some near Arcadia, but just on the border there of Hardy and DeSoto County. It's a pretty intense cell. Uh, this is what we have right now, Avon Park on the uh, State Road 27 getting the heaviest rainfall with some occasional lightning strikes there as well. Well, the tropics have been relatively quiet. We haven't had anything really to watch uh, as of late, but now a little system may be popping up and it may be extra tropical, uh, not a true tropical system, a hybrid, if you will. If it develops, there's not going to be a big impact on any land area. It would move off to the northeast into the open waters of the Atlantic. The, the tropics are being quiet out here in the main development region. We don't really expect much out here in June. Uh, by mid-July and into August, especially, we start to see a little bit more. But there's a lot of African dust. That's what you see right there is that uh, yellow and orange. That's uh, dry on the scale here. And that, again, is a result of uh, the African dust, which has moved off the coast of Africa. It's a wide area. On top of that, Temperatures are much cooler in the main development region than they were last year, and that's, good, that's a good sign. Uh, they're running extremely cool. In fact, uh, since 1982, you have to go back to find them this cool in the main development region off the coast of Africa, uh, stretching through, again, much of the Atlantic all the way over to the Caribbean. Now, they start to warm up a little bit in the Caribbean. That's not the best news because Mother Nature does have to get rid of the excess of uh, energy in the atmosphere. And you'll notice these are water temperatures here in the Florida Straits, 90 degrees, Western Caribbean into the mid 80s. So things are really heating up there. And uh, we hope that's not the trend in terms of where the storms will be popping up because they have a tendency to have an impact on the United States Gulf Coast region. Well, we are looking at uh, the water vapor here closer to home. A little bit of dry air has moved in. We have high pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere and at the surface. And that's sinking air and kind of compresses it and heats it up and dries it out a little bit. And that's the reason why we're not seeing many storms along the coast, on top of the fact that the high pressure ridge is right over us. Uh, the future cast does call for a few possible showers in the Gulf uh, during the overnight hours and then a couple working their way onshore. Uh, say around 10, 11 o'clock, and then most of the action. This is Wednesday at 430, showing the line moving off basically to the east. Similar expected, uh, similar conditions expected on Thursday and Friday with a transition moving back toward the coast on Saturday and Sunday. Unfortunately, a lot of people will be out in the area beaches. Uh, keep your eye to the sky and uh, on our weather app at uh, First Alert Weather uh, here at WWSB. The uh, for, uh, forecast I mentioned uh, is going to say mainly inland storms on Thursday and Friday. 87 right now, the heat index at 95. We have sunshine here at the airport. The pressure is still pretty high at 30.07 inches. Look out, too, if you're going to be outdoors working or even playing in the afternoon hours because the heat index will be up near 100 degrees and in some cases even a little higher than that away from the uh, water. South winds turn to the west, 5 to 10 knots. Not much wind for your sail out there. Seas running two feet or less. The extended forecast and calling for highs to be close to seasonal averages, but that won't be the real story. It'll be the heat index right through Friday with dangerous heat index levels, 100 to 105 degrees. Much uh, we'll have, uh, Alan will have primetime headlines right after this.
Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Roser from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Watch ABC 7 wherever you are. On our live stream, on mysuncoast.com, on the ABC 7 My Suncoast app. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Featuring traffic maps and live radar, dining with recipes, and My Suncoast restaurant guide. Visit mysuncoast.com. Click on the Apps tab to download the ABC 7 My Suncoast app for Apple and Android. Are you a soccer mom or dad? Regardless of their age or experience level, when your kids play soccer or any other sport, there's one person on the sideline who is key to help recognize and seek medical care for sports-related concussion. It's you. You need to know the signs and symptoms of concussion, and you need to act if you think your child has been injured. Remember, when in doubt, sit them out. To learn more, go to cbc.gov concussion. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you. And for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Welcome back. Checking primetime headlines in the five to four decision today. The Supreme Court upheld President Trump's travel ban on several predominantly Muslim countries. ABC's Tara Palmieri has more from Washington on what could be coming next from the White House. President Trump taking a bow after the Supreme Court ruled that its controversial travel ban is illegal. A tremendous victory for the American people. By a narrow five to four margin, the court upholding the ban, saying the president has the power to regulate immigration. Imagine, if you can, that Congress is unable to act when the president asks for legislation. Five of the countries named in the ban are Muslim majority, but the latest version of the order also includes North Korea and Venezuela. At a minimum, we have to make sure that we vet people coming into the country. We know who's coming in. We know where they're coming from. President Trump issued the first version of the travel ban weeks after taking office. The hasty rollout caused chaos at the airports. The court ruled on the third iteration of the travel ban issued in September 2017. The president's comments during the campaign complicating the matter. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. Justice Sotomayor reading her joint dissent with Justice Ginsburg out loud, conveying their strong opposition to the ruling, saying, quote, our Constitution demands and our country deserves a judiciary willing to hold the coordinate branches to account when they defy our most sacred legal commitments. The court's decision today has failed in that respect. Shame on you to take us back decades ago to the Dark Ages. 
Now that the executive order has been ruled legal, President Trump says he has no intention of expanding it to include other countries. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, Washington. A bill that would restore health coverage for thousands of veterans who were possibly exposed to Agent Orange is moving forward in Washington. The House approving the bill earlier today, co-sponsored by Vern Buchanan. The measure would provide VA health benefits for 90,000 Navy veterans who served on ships and ports off the coast of Vietnam. During the war, those veterans were eligible to receive benefits under the Agent Orange Act of 1991, but their eligibility was discontinued in 2002 by the Department of Veterans Affairs. The un armed security monitor who first spotted the Park Parkland shooting suspect before the incident is now being dismissed from his job. The Broward County School District announcing Andrew Medina will not be rehired for the upcoming school year. Medina said he saw Nicholas Cruz enter the school but didn't try and stop him even though he recognized him as a potentially dangerous former student. It later came out Medina was suspended last year for making sexual remarks to female students including a student who died in the shooting. A panel had recommended recommended Medina be fired, but administrators kept him on until today. A day of fishing for a family vacation in Fort Lauderdale quickly turned into a rescue operation after a charter boat caught fire about a mile offshore. The family spotted the flames and rushed to get everyone off as soon as possible, but as they were scrambling, one man almost went overboard. Can I get everybody off? Oh my God, they wanted to kiss me, but I wouldn't let them. <laughs> Thankfully, all six people on board were rescued and are safe tonight. Crews are now working with a salvage company to figure out what to do with the damaged boat. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.